hey, 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 hey. We've got cool stuff today. We've got a painting video, boarding actions terrain, the stuff from um, Soul Shackle, or hopefully uh, new stuff from Soul Shackle. We've got uh, Gallo Dark, Into the Dark, um, Shadow Vaults, uh, all the new cool Space Hulk esque spaceship corridors whatever you want to call them. They're really, really cool, and we're going to do a painting video uh, on them. They're, it's a really, really simple painting video. I have used an airbrush, I apologise, uh, but you can do it with a dry brush. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's really, really simple. Nobody's going to struggle with this. Um, however, there are a few little things that we need to do to prep the pieces before we get painting, because the, the parts go together. So the... Um, the parts clip together, uh, and you can rearrange the uh, the layout of them for all the different missions in uh, Arcs of Omen boarding actions. However, as you can see here, they're a really, really, really tight fit. And um, if if I'm going to be recreating and, and redoing all the uh, the mission layouts for Arcs of Omen, I want to I want to make it a little bit easier to. Uh, push, push them together. So it's it's really really simple. There's a couple of things that we need to do quickly. Uh, so if you get a nice rough file and uh, just file down both sides of the tabs, then that will uh, allow it just to slot in a lot easier. Um, and it's 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 not going to be loose on the table because there's a cap that goes over the top as well. Um, and, and also that's actually quite tight as well. So luckily I had a file here which was exactly the right size to just widen this gap up at the top uh, by a couple of mil. Um, not even that, just one millimetre. Um, and then once that sits in there, then the cap will sit on the top. Uh, it's an incredibly messy process. <laughs> Oh, it's an incredibly messy process, but uh, it, it, it is worth it. Um, just sit down, stick some TV on, uh, and uh, I don't know, a couple of hours. Uh, I did two... I've done two full uh, kill team terrain sets, so one one full um, boarding actions terrain set with all this, um, and it it it, it was I, I don't know it was it was half a day, two hours, something like that. I don't know. Um, I, I stuck some stuck some TV on and just uh, and just got through it all. Uh, it's it's one of those it's one of those jobs that I quite like in terms of. Um, just being able to switch off and it's not it's not difficult uh you can just pick up another piece sand it put it down when it's finished and then get, get another one and then before you know it you're done um so this is the other part as well the doors are incredibly stiff and there's a couple of reasons for this the the um the hinge that the door sits in has got a a tapered top so as it turns around it catches the top and also the thickness of the um, of the hinge itself um, is just a little bit too thick. So, same idea. We're just going to increase the tolerances there, just so that it's uh, much easier to open. So, we're going to top uh, top and tail it as well, just so that it uh, it can spin a little bit more freely. Because, like I say, that the the top of the hinge is uh, tapered, so it catches it as it turns around. So we're going to top and tail that to give it a little bit more freedom and clearance and uh, and then just um, scrape off some excess plastic and then that will allow the door to open up much more freely. Um, I, I didn't want... Uh, <laughs> I've done this to probably... Yeah, I've not done it to my whole terrain set so uh, it's bugging me at the moment because I've got five doors I think which I haven't done it to um, and it's bugging me. I'm like... Everything's got to be perfect if I'm going to do something like this. And uh, I've got five doors which creak when they open, and you've got to you've got to sort of hold the terrain down while you open the doors. Um, if you don't do this, particularly if you um, file down the tabs so that they're a, they're, they're a much looser fit. Um, if 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 the tabs aren't filed down, then everything is absolutely rock solid and it doesn't move at all. Um, and and you can kind of aggressively open the doors but if you if you do what i'm doing here and just um, opening everything up a little bit just so it's a, a little bit more free um then uh, yeah it's it's much better just to just to uh, open up the tolerances on these so the doors open better so glue them on try not to get uh, glue around the hinge part so i put it onto the onto the back bit 
uh, and then run it run it down at the top and there you go the door opens really really easily uh, and you'll see that actually when we when we start airbrushing it that the, even the pressure of the airbrush just just blows it open so these are the paints that we're going to use there's three paints for the metallics um and like i say i am going to airbrush these uh, basically all you need is a is a is a dark metallic a mid metallic and then and then something like the chrome the chrome is absolutely fantastic i use the chrome so much so i would recommend getting the the model air model air chrome paint um i even use it when i'm highlighting gold it's fantastic so like i say you can very very easily um dry brush this if you want to uh i just had well <laughs> If you're watching this, I'm guessing you've got a, a couple of sets as well to finish, but I was going to say I've got a lot to do, but everybody's got a lot to do. So you can dry brush it. I would get a big dry brush. When you are dry brushing it, I'd only dry brush in one direction. Um, you'll see when I airbrush in a second that I'm only airbrushing from the top, so you get a little bit of a, a metallic shadow going on. Um, the the angles at which I'm airbrushing gets gets more and more as I'm going down the... Uh, uh, as I'm going up the highlights, so you'll see that a little bit. So here I'm I'm airbrushing a little bit square on, but still from the top, so I'm not getting that much of a shadow underneath. Um, and then the the brighter the, the brighter the highlight we get, the more I will um, uh, the more I will point downwards, sort of thing. So we get a bit more of a highlight. So if you look here, so this is the kind of angle that I'm spraying at. You can see the shadow that it's leaving. Um, that's probably a little bit too much of an angle. You can uh, you can afford to go a little bit less than that and get a bit less of a shadow. Um, but the the next uh, the next paint, uh, and also this is this is also if you have a look at that, that's the angle at which you need to dry brush. So don't dry brush up and down. Uh, just dry brush down, uh, and then that will leave you the the little shadow areas as well. They're lovely paints. These they go through the airbrush really really nicely. So if you are airbrushing, uh, I'm using. Uh, Tamiya, oh, what's the what's the thinner? Tamiya X twenty A thinner. So you saw me put a couple of drops of that into the airbrush at the beginning, um, and then uh, filled. <laughs> I pretty much filled it up because I was doing all of them. Um, and then the second one is the gunmetal with just a touch of just a touch of um, chrome in there as well, uh, just to lighten it a little bit more. And you can see we're going a little bit. Uh, very much more vertical and we're, we're trying to keep that bit of shadow in there as well uh, with this with this layer uh, one thing that you must remember to do is you must remember to open the door like that because then you can get the inside of the <laughs> perfect timing the inside of the door shut uh, and the top and bottom of the door as well so make sure you're doing that and then this is the final highlight so a little drop of the x28 thinner i absolutely love this thinner i don't know what it is about it um it's it's it just seems to smooth everything out. Um, so we've got a couple of drops of chrome. Uh, so one, two, three, four. It's four drops of chrome to one drop of the gunmetal. Uh, so the gunmetal just drops it back in tone just a fraction, so it's not quite as bright. You'll see there's it's still plenty bright enough when we get it on there. Uh, but it's four to one. Um, and uh, it's quite a thin... It's quite a thin... Um, thin mix here with the thinner and we'll mix this up and then what we're going to do with this is we're going to make a uh, a very directional uh, highlight running across the center of the terrain um, and it's going to look incredibly bright um, but one of the things when you're weathering stuff particularly terrain or, or even even space marines if you're weathering space marines very heavily and putting lots of washers and uh, recess washers on them uh, one thing you need to do is kind of over highlight because then the the shade and the weathering drops it right back so where we're hitting this you can see we're running if you look at the uh, the, the pillars on the edge it's broken up into into three layers so all we're doing is we're running straight across the center of those three um, we're doing it a little bit at a time, building it up, um, and you'll see a little bit better in a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're just building straight across the centre of the whole of the whole terrain, and then that that highlight line will run across all of the terrain. And then when we start the weathering, we'll weather the top and then the bottom as well. Um, 
and it will kind of merge merge together. The weathering will merge together in the centre um, and keep that highlight line. So there you can see the highlight line running across the middle, speeding it up. I should have sped up the whole thing. It was really cool like this. Um, and then picking up any any uh, any extra details, so like that um, the the grill uh, on one side, but the majority of it is all centered across the center, all <laughs> all focused across the center, as you can see there. Um, and also, once you turn it upside down as well, you can see how much of it is is focused from the uh, from the upside. Um, and um, to be honest. To be honest, when you're doing that, this it, this works really well because uh, even more so than the models, this is something that you're definitely going to be looking at from the top. Uh, you're never going to be picking this up, so the, the, the terrain up. So you want to make it look very, very cool from uh, from eye, eye, eye height. So you're never going to be picking the terrain up. You're never going to be looking at it from like straight on like this. So whenever you're painting, just make sure you're um, focusing on the upper upper angles. Um, so where where you're going to be looking at it from now we've i showed a few different color paints up uh, after that and all all they are are some nice mid-tone primary colors so um there's there's a there was a blue i think it was um, vallejo medium blue which is absolutely gorgeous blue mephiston red uh which is a which is a fantastic covering red I could have gone Evil Sun Scarlet, but uh, it, Evil Sun Scarlet doesn't quite cover as much. And when we're wanting to cover bright silver like this, um, Mephiston Red's a little bit better. These aren't, it's not watered down. These are straight out of the pot, straight onto the wet palette. I've not added any any water onto the wet palette. Uh, then we have a Morgas Bone, which is perfect for the, for the skulls. And uh, I have used a green. Um, I used a green on some of the... Um, some of the computer panels uh, and i think that was just warpstone glow uh, again just try and find mid mid colors uh, because we're going to we're going to shade them down but you still want to try and keep the uh, the brightness of the of the color in there um, and uh, <laughs> so i i start painting the start painting the um uh, the, the the computer panels there with the blue and uh, actually when you get to the when you get to the end I've changed it and I've gone green uh, right now the the cables actually there the cables running along the top uh, as you can see now as we're looking down on it from there I haven't painted haven't painted the top of the cables so that's a perfect example I had to go back and do that again uh, but that's a perfect example of painting the top angles of everything so that it looks good from uh, the viewing angle that we're going to be looking at it from uh, right now this is where we're going to start the weathering now this is streaking grime um, this is uh, <laughs> everybody seems to love this paint it's 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 really really cool when you're when you're trying to do an overall kind of grungy feel um, I like using it a little bit more selectively but I did get a bit carried away um, so I've got streaking grime and I've also got uh, black templar contrast black templar just to darken it a little bit because uh, I don't really want it green um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do two different colors on the top and the bottom of the terrain here so that we've got a bit of contrast going on a bit of color contrast going on so you can see when it goes on it's kind of the bright green and then I've just got a brush full of contrast uh, black templar there and just mixed it in and it goes that kind of dark turquoisey yucky kind of color um, and you can see we are uh, we're painting it upside down at the moment so we want all of this to run into the upper recesses um, where we've been making the shadows with the airbrushing we want this in that shadow area there just to give the shadow some interest uh, and lessen and soften the the transitions that we had there um, and then when we get to the larger panels we want to keep this just to the top side uh, and then one of the one of the cool things about this is that you can kind of you can sort of streak it so every now and then I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning the brush off uh, and just pulling it down like that there we go so uh, I'm very good on my timing this uh, so cleaning the brush off and then just dragging it down uh, and creating some creating some um, some streaks um, as if it's as if it's water that's running down things like that so you're trying to trying to trying to land it a little bit in uh, in reality um, but ultimately what we want to do is we want to build up lots and lots of different layers 
of detail uh, of weathered yuckiness. So this is one of the great ones, uh, one, of, one of the great paints to do it with because it, uh, it does dry um, really interestingly and then you can, as it's drying, you can streak it quite well. Um, so yeah, it, it is cool. Uh, it does work really, really well with the contrast black as well, just darkens it down. Um, and then once we've got all that on, uh, and now I don't like the Nihilac Oxide. The Nihilac Oxide I got because I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a little bit of rust and then I have a little bit of verdigris in a, in a, in a different sense, but I didn't really like it. So uh, ultimately, I don't think you need it. Maybe I didn't apply it quite aggressively because I, I tend to... I tend to go a little bit more subtle, although you won't believe that. Uh, right now, this is the the rusty rust stuff. Um, I re I really really like it, but every time I use it, I have to do this every time. I used this last week, so this is a week's worth of the bottle sitting, and the um, the the pigment and the uh, and the texture that you get in the paint. So as it dries, you get um, the paint stain and then the texture dries uh, lots a lot lighter and looks like the rust but the texture just coagulates in the bottom of the, of the <laughs> in the bottom of the in the bottom of the paint um, and if you don't do this every single time I use it uh, then I just get the orange the orange kind of stain without without the rust texture as well so uh, it doesn't take that long stick a stick a, a, a very thin uh, this is an old paintbrush. Uh, stick a very thin paintbrush uh, handle in there. Give it a good mix around until when you pull it out, it doesn't have any of the uh, coagulation left on the bottom of it. Uh, it. As you can see, this is real time. I haven't sped this up so you can see how long it takes. But it doesn't take that long. Um, and then I just wipe off the wipe off the um, uh, the brush handle with a piece of piece of uh, tissue paper afterwards. But it's really cool. It's, it is a it is a um, addictively cool paint, and in my usual way, I try to uh, I try to add it kind of subtly, uh, and then get carried away because it starts looking really really cool. So <laughs> it's it's I'd probably say uh, I would probably say kind of start off start off subtle, um, and you can. Once you've added it, once you've added it to the model, you can get a little bit of water on your brush and kind of uh, stain it down and, and water it down. Now you can see now this has dried. Um, you can see how it's just kind of focusing on the top. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to focus all the rust where it's going to be settling, uh, which is going to be in the bottom recesses. So you've got the the grime and the gunge uh, and the shadow created by the streaking grime on the top side. Sorry, underneath the top side of all the um, of, of all the overhangs, uh, and then now on the bottom side of the whole terrain, you're going to have this uh, this rust color, uh, which which really adds some really cool color contrast to it, uh, just some interest. So this is this is focusing on uh, anywhere that the rust will um, anywhere well anywhere where the, the water will kind of settle and therefore then rust the the part so uh, kind of getting it all in there and then as we get up towards the top you'll notice I'm, I'm applying a little bit less when we get up towards the top and also watering it down afterwards as well so um, we, we, we don't want too much orange up towards the top side because we want to try and keep that I'm going to try and keep that um, color interest of the streaking grime up at the top so the green up at the top uh, and then the the rust down at the bottom so th this is uh, a lot of water now on my brush just kind of trying to thin it down and and, uh, and soften a lot of the uh, the, the tone of it. Um, well, not really the tone, but like the drying. You, you'll kind of understand when you use it, but as it, as it dries, it goes really, <laughs> for want of a better word, it goes really rusty. Uh, and then if you can, if you apply uh, water to it uh, as it's as as you put it on, uh, then it doesn't dry rusty. It just kind of dries as a stain. Uh, so that's kind of what I was looking for um, once you get over the halfway mark. But yeah, any any surface which is flat uh, from the top, and you can see how rusty it's looking down at the bottom. I love it. I, this is where I just get carried away because the bottom side of it just starts looking so cool. Um, and uh, but but definitely you kind of build it up like this. It doesn't really take that long. Uh, but there's there's the water again, adding the water on and just trying to thin it down. Uh, sucking it out so that it's got a bit of a bit of a rust feel 
a bit of an oxidation feel, but not um, a, a full-on rust rust look. Uh, and also, that's a moving part, that handle. So because that's being open and closed, maybe not like a lot, but it is being open and closed, it's going to rub away the rust. Um, so down at the bottom, it's going to definitely be much more rusty than, than some of the other areas. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can you can add add the little bits like this, and then you get very very carried away, and you just kind of slosh it on afterwards. <laughs> but I would recommend um, here's the slosh bit. Like just just slosh it on at the bottom. Uh, it looks very 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 cool once once the bottom. Um, I don't know, like little centimeter ten mil. The bottom the bottom ten mil is just covered in rust because uh, that's that's where it's going to settle and sit on the the boarding action terrain as well which is a very kind of browny terrain so if you get plenty of rust on there it will it will help uh, soften that into uh, the terrain as well so kind of sit it and ground it into the terrain <laughs> it's just it's too, it is a lot of fun i would really recommend getting some of this the uh, the company also do a a moss um so water soluble paint uh, dirty down moss so they do the dirty down rust and then the dirty down moss and then i think they do a dirty down verdigris as well i haven't got the verdigris one maybe i should try and get that one as well and try that um but uh, i would imagine it's very very similar to the nihilac oxide uh but uh, yeah i i i add i add some of the nihilac oxide i just don't like how it looks um on this particular thing um it would have looked better if I'd have painted some of the parts brass or bronze um, because then it would have kind of looked a little bit more natural. But I tried I tried kind of soaking it and covering it in, um, covering it, covering up some of the just regular regular metal. Uh, I, I didn't really like how it looks. So once it once it's kind of on its way to drying, you can also streak it like this. Um, so kind of... Uh, Dry your dry your brush off, um, or clean your brush out, and then have it a little bit damp, and then you can streak it a little bit. So this is where I tried the Nihilac oxide, uh, and again I try it, and I, I, I'm trying to do it. It doesn't look it, but I'm trying to do it sort of subtly, and I probably shouldn't have added the water there. Uh, I was trying to add the water and kind of let it let it sit in the recesses, and you can see now I, I, I'm not really liking it. I'm trying to rub it off. Um, <laughs> and ultimately I just kind of <laughs> ultimately I get some rust and just put the rust back on it again um, but um, yeah now very very quickly uh, just if you water down uh, water down the rust as well and just add little bits to all the top surface at uh, the top of the uh, bolts uh, and rivets um, that will uh, that will help as well so have uh, have a damp brush a tiny little bit of uh, dirty down rust and then you can just run around with it like just like a wash like you would if it was known oil and just tap the rivet and then it will uh, kind of uh, have a little bit of a, a rusty feel around the rivet as well um, all these little bits here so if you look on the right hand side on that uh, on that panel there's one very very bright rivet there where the highlight is so that sort of rivet uh, just needs getting caught so that it uh, so that it actually has some contrast and some some panel lines in there, some separation from the back. <laughs> this is just a it's just a, a rusty rusty video. This one. There we go. So just just underneath all the uh, underneath all the bolts bolt heads, and then loads on the bottom. Get carried away again and put loads on the bottom. Get it grounded into the uh, into the into the dark terrain. The arcs of Omen. It's such a good boarding. It's. I've done quite a few of these panels now, and I've got them together on. Uh, got them together on a on on the board, and it looks so good. It really does. I'm so excited to play. I'm gonna have to get that Inquisitorial Warband sorted very very quickly, very soon. So this is this is pretty much all we need to do on this. So you're you're adding. Adding painted details like the uh, the skulls and the wires and everything and then weathering over the top of them And then once it's all dry, it looks like this it looks absolutely fantastic. You can see that highlight running right down the center of it as well um, And it looks and that, that's beautifully brilliant how, and and on this side as well You can see how I've uh, the 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 hatch handle uh, I've already uh, I painted that uh, red as well just to give it a bit of difference right so now we're going to do a very very cheat cheaty kind of um osl some object source lighting on uh, we're going to make the 
the lights glow. So we've got some Liquitex white ink, some contrast, what was the contrast paint? Uh, Talisar blue, uh, and then Iandan yellow. Iandan yellow is just because I haven't got any other yellow. I might use Imperial Fist yellow in, in the future, but I've just got the iron and yellow. So when you're applying this, uh, it's, it's a good, uh, th th using inks is actually a really good airbrush control kind of practice. So um, whenever you're using inks, it's really nice to try and get that trigger control nice and smooth. But uh, I'm, I'm, applying, I'm, I'm applying this all the way around, uh, anywhere that I think the light would bleed to. Um, I, sh I should have taken this one a little bit lower, as you can see, it would have caught the top of that, um, top of that control box as well. Uh, I didn't go quite low enough on this one. But uh, just adding white to all of that, and then on the other side, uh, this is purely by accident, um, that one is very, very rusty. So I've just selected not to uh, have that one not uh, highlighted. Um, so uh, yeah, just going back in, making sure you've got a nice white spot. Uh, and I've also done the, the little computer uh, terminal there as well. And then all we do is you pick um, pick a nice bright, you can do whatever colours you like. If you want to do red, I would use, uh, what's it called, Baal Red. So Baal Red is a good one, it's a nice bright red. And uh, you can also do an orange as well. Magma Dross Flame is a great contrast paint to airbrush. Uh, so that would work for a white one as well. Um, and as you can see there, how I'm highlighting, you highlight an airbrush around where you've, uh, around the light source. So we're just trying to tint the color around the light source because the light source itself is going to be very bright. And then whatever the light source reflects onto tells the color of what the light source is, if that makes sense. Um, so the light source itself isn't blue, the light source itself particularly in this dark corridor, is going to be a bright, bright, uh, kind of just blue, white. Uh, and then where it shines onto is going to be blue. So that's where you get that from. Um, and then just for uh, the terminal, the computer terminal, uh, I'm just going to brush paint this one. And uh, this is just Warpstone Glow. So uh, I would probably, I, I, uh, there are some larger computer terminals on some of the pieces of terrain and I would definitely airbrush those. Uh, this one, uh, because it was only one, uh, I thought oh, I'll just I'll just throw a little bit of this on with a brush just so that you can see as well. It's, uh, it's very easy just to do with the brush as well. Keeping it down to one side. There we go. So that's the that's the OSL done as well, and then you can see here that's another one that I've done, and then there's the there's the yellow uh, for the hatchway door as well. So you've got the 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 yellow of the hatchway door. You got blue for some of them. I would try and like have some uh, like a little rule in your head, like okay, so if it's this light, it's going to be blue. If it's this light, it's going to be green. If it's this sort of light, like the one that's over the 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 door here, if it's that kind of light, it's going to be yellow. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. You'll notice we haven't done anything on the center uh, of the, where the tabs fit because we don't want to create any more. Um, like we don't want to make that any tighter. Remember, we've we've already kind of sanded down the tabs so that they fit. Um, so we don't want any more paint in there. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of this done. Please, 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 if you do work on any yourself, tag me on Instagram, tag me on Twitter, throw them up on Twitter, um, and you can find me on Twitter, uh, Twitch, and Instagram, all as Chris Frossin. Uh, same with Patreon as well. I would love you to drop me a follow on all of those. And uh, if you like this video, please, please, please like, share and subscribe uh, because I think these videos are great. I'm really enjoying doing them. I hope you're enjoying the content and have a fantastic rest of the day, guys. Um, this is just out just before the weekend. So you've now got two days to go and prep all your terrain and get it all painted because fighting on a space hog is really, really cool. Really, really is. Right. Take care, everybody. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and... Uh, Bye-bye. See you at the next one.